The story begins in 1904, when a woman named Sabrina Spielreen arrives at the Bergholzli Psychiatric Hospital in Zurich. It turns out that she has a severe form of hysteria that leads to an overwhelming range of emotions. While heading into the building, Sabina begins screaming and yells at the others to stop, but the staff carries her and eventually brings her inside. The next day in the treatment room, a prominent psychiatrist named Carl Jung enters and introduces himself to Sabina, but immediately Sabina yells angrily at him, saying she's okay and doesn't need his help. Carl, on the other hand, gently says that, in that case, he just wants to talk to her. He then takes a seat behind Sabina and inquires about her condition. When Carl asks her what makes her hysterical, Sabina responds that whenever she feels humiliated, she breaks out in a cold sweat. The topic then shifts to Sabina's childhood and she describes how her father was often frustrated with her and used to beat her since she was four years old. Later at home, Carl discusses Sabina's unusual case with his pregnant wife Emma. He says that he'd like to engage in psychoanalytic therapy to determine what caused Sabina's mental state. It's based on Sigmund Freud's theory of psychoanalysis, which has not yet been tested on anyone. So Carl decides to put his hypothesis and treatment to the test on Sabina to see if it works. Days pass and Carl's sessions have no noticeable impact on Sabina's condition. One day, while the two take a walk through the garden, Sabina admits that her mother does not love her father because an angel informed her so. Furthermore, Sabina affirms that she hears voices in her head telling her that she'll never be a doctor, but Carl advises her to dismiss such thoughts. He then informs the woman that he must go for military service for a few weeks. Hearing this, Sabina becomes enraged and yells about how these therapies are a waste of time. She then proceeds to behave erratically while throwing her coat. Carl tries to calm her down and picks up her coat and begins to beat it with a cane to dust it off. And upon seeing this, Sabina becomes even more enraged so she grabs the coat and leaves. The next day, Sabina frustrates the caregivers by refusing to eat anything. Her nurse tries to reason with her, but when the situation becomes difficult to handle, she summons Dr. Bluler, who rushes to Sabina's room to check on her. The nurse also accompanies him, but they discover no one in her room. Meanwhile, three staff members struggle to keep Sabina under control outside the institute. She swims around in a filthy pond, reluctant to leave. Just then, Bluler arrives and asks Sabina whether she has any hobbies to keep her occupied, to which she says that she wants to end her life. She also informs the doctor that she never wants to see Carl again. After that, the crew drags Sabina from the pond and takes her to the bathroom against her will. The nurses put her in a bathtub to clean her, after which she eventually calms down. A few days later, Carl returns to the institution and informs Sabina that he wants to recruit her as his assistant and research associate. Sabina is overjoyed to hear this because she too aspires to be a psychiatrist in the future. Following that, she actively participates in Carl's research initiatives. Sabina is now focused on her work and her mind appears to be at ease. One day, Carl invites his wife Emma to participate in his research and after their session, he asks Sabina about her thoughts on Emma. After thinking for a while, Sabina says that Emma is concerned about her baby and fears her husband no longer has affection for her. Now, Carl's surprised to hear this from her. And on top of that, Sabina concludes that Emma is his wife, but Carl tries to act as if she's wrong. In the next scene, Emma gives birth to a baby girl, and Carl's happy seeing this. Emma, on the other hand, apologizes to her husband for failing to give him a son. Later, Carl and Sabina resume their session, and he learns that when her father used to beat her, she felt excited and eventually became a sadist. She then began looking for any way to humiliate herself that would make her pleased. Therefore, when Carl hit her coat with a stick, she became excited and shouted. The scene then shifts to two years later, when Carl and Emma arrive to meet the renowned neurologist Sigmund Freud in Vienna. Carl talks with them about the state of Sabina and the findings he reached using Freud's psychoanalytic theories. He also explains that Sabina is now doing exceptionally well and is even enrolled in a medical program. Carl informs Freud that her deep-seated traumas cause her to have pathological sexual tendencies, which Freud claims are frequent among his patients. Back in Switzerland, Carl meets with Sabina and informs her of his meeting with Freud. He claims that they have differing perspectives on how to address this new discovery and whether it will be useful. According to Carl, Freud is a highly stubborn person who believes only in his own views and refuses to be persuaded by anyone. Sabina, on the other hand, believes that Freud is right and that her case proves it. They then discuss Sabina being the best student at medical school. Sabina says she wants to be an excellent psychiatrist and help others achieve freedom. Hearing this, Carl promises her that she will one day become a psychiatrist, but Sabina does not believe in herself. A few days later, Freud writes to Carl and asks him to watch after his patient, Otto Gross, who is a brilliant doctor himself. 
He also tells Carl that Otto must not be released and that they must use extreme caution since he's very dangerous. After Otto arrives, Carl sits with him for a session, during which they discuss his well-being and his doubts about monogamous marriage. Otto states that he freely engages in sexual relations with his patients because he believes that doing so makes them more open and offers them a sense of freedom. Otto also tries to encourage Carl to sleep with one of his patients, but Carl refuses, claiming that it's wrong. The next day, Carl meets with Sabina, who reveals that she's begun to develop feelings for him and says that she's a virgin. Sabina believes that due to her father's acts, intimacy has become inevitably related to punishment for her. However, she wants to try it with Carl and then suddenly kisses him. Surprisingly, Carl also reveals that he has affection for her. However, he urges that they keep their cool because he's married and it could jeopardize their professional relationship as well. Afterward, Carl discusses Sabina's activities with Otto, who encourages him to take the initiative to sleep with her. Carl, on the other hand, insists that this is wrong and that he doesn't want to take advantage of her fragility. The following day, Otto becomes intimate with one of the nurses from the facility. After indulging in pleasure, he climbs up a wall and escapes the institution. Later, Carl arrives at Otto's room but finds it empty with a message left for him. Otto asks him to inform his father that he's died, although he's out living his best life. He also thanks Carl for everything and encourages him not to repress his urges. Now, influenced by Otto's words, Carl then goes to Sabina's room and they get intimate with each other. In the next scene, Carl arrives home, where Emma tells him she has a surprise for him and shows him a yacht, which warms his heart. At this point, Carl decides to end his affair with Sabina because he's married to Emma, but Sabina doesn't agree to stop and continues to seduce him. Carl also succumbs to his sexual need and even helps her fulfill her fantasy of sexual punishment by beating her like her father used to. Days later, when he arrives home, he discovers that Emma has finally given birth to a boy. Emma's now content because she believes her husband will finally stay with her, but Carl continues his affair with Sabina. Months later, Carl meets with Freud again, who admits that sending Otto to him was a mistake. Carl, on the other hand, assures Freud that he's glad he did because it helped him to be assured of his decision. That night, the two psychiatrists argue with each other because Carl believes that there must be more to psychoanalysis than the sexual aspect. He tries to persuade Freud that there's no such thing as coincidence, but Freud counters that their research is so delicate that they can only investigate things scientifically. Days later, during a boat ride, Freud tells Carl that there's a rumor that he's been sleeping with one of his patients, but naturally, Carl denies doing so. After this interaction, Carl realizes he cannot continue this affair, so he informs Sabina that they can no longer be in intimate relationships. He wants them to resume their normal doctor-patient interaction, but Sabina is enraged since she has feelings for him. Later, back at home, Emma confronts Carl about the affair, but Carl rejects the accusation. But still, Emma says that she'll not give up without a fight. A few days later, Sabina arrives at Carl's office and argues with him, since he revealed the relationship to her mother. Carl claims that her mother was already aware of the affair due to an anonymous letter she received. He also informs Sabina that from now on, he's only her doctor and she is his patient. But upon hearing this, Sabina becomes enraged and cuts his face with a knife and leaves. In a fit of rage, Sabina writes a letter to Freud asking him to meet her on a matter of significant concern to both of them. After reading the letter, Freud writes to Carl, asking him if he knows anything about her. In response, Carl states that Sabina was the case that brought them together and he begs Freud to intervene to prevent a disaster. After that, Freud sends a letter to Sabina in which he expresses his belief that she and Carl were once close but are no longer together. He tells Sabina they must solve their problems between them without any external help. After reading this letter, Sabina visits Carl's office and discovers that he's leaving the hospital. She accuses him of convincing Freud that she's lying about their affair. So she demands that he write a letter to Freud in which he must tell the whole truth about their affair. On top of that, Sabina threatens Carl that she has the power to destroy him, but she's decided not to. Having no other option, Carl eventually writes a letter to Freud in which he claims that everything Sabina said was true. Days later, we see Carl and Freud boarding a ship headed for America. In the evening, they talk about Carl's bizarre dream and their individual interpretations of it. However, Freud is reluctant to disclose his dreams to Carl because he doesn't want to jeopardize his authority. The scene then shifts to a few years later when Sabina visits Carl to work on her dissertation. She informs him that she'll leave Zurich to relocate to Vienna after receiving her degree. Carl sobs when he hears this and begs her not to go, but Sabina has already made up her decision. Two years later, Sabina graduates as a psychiatrist and she meets Freud in Vienna. They talk about psychoanalysis and even though she usually agrees with him, 
Sabina thinks Freud and Carl should get along so that psychoanalysis can continue to advance. However, Freud isn't interested in making amends. He avoids the topic and asks if she's available to care for his patients, which surprises her. Afterward, Freud pays Carl a visit to his office to amend their relationship, but their meeting is unsuccessful. Due to Carl's involvement with Sabina and his immoral actions in Switzerland, Freud is compelled to break their friendship. Over the following few days, they exchange letters as rivals rather than as friends or co-workers. And finally, they part ways by cutting each other out of their lives as each of them begins to doubt the other's sincerity. A few years later, Sabina, who's now married and pregnant, visits Carl and Emma at their home. Emma tells her that ever since her husband broke off his relationship with Freud, he's been suffering from mental illness. After that, Sabina sits by the river with Carl and makes an effort to reason with him. Carl admits he can't sleep because of his apocalyptic dreams about being swept away by a flood. She then inquires about his new mistress, to which Carl replies that she's similar to Sabina and reminds him of the time when they were together. Furthermore, he admits to Sabina that he regrets parting ways with her, but that there's nothing he can do at this point. As the movie ends, it's revealed that Freud passed away in London in 1939 due to cancer after being forced out of Vienna by the Nazis. On the other hand, Sabina taught a lot of analysts in Russia before she and her two daughters were killed by Nazis in 1942. And on a lighter note, Carl recovered from his nervous breakdown and went on to become the world's leading psychologist before passing away in 1961.